If you're in this class, Electrodynamics, I'm going to talk to you about the most important things at the beginning of Chapter 5 on magnetostatics. So these are the equations that you really need to understand. Number one is this. That's the Lorentz force. This says that a force on a charged particle depends on the electric field, the magnetic field, and the velocity of the particle. So here we have that QV cross B. And that is a cross product, so that magnetic force is perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. Now, if you have a current instead of a wire, well, you have to integrate over that whole wire to find the force because the whole wire experiences the force. But the, the cool thing here is that really IDL is like QV, right? But now you have a whole bunch of QV, so you have to integrate. This is the definition of the surface charge current. So if I have the surface charge density sigma, which we used before for polarization, and you multiply it by the velocity of those charges, surface charge, charge density, surface charge surface current density and then we have a current density which is the charge density times the velocity so that's like if, if charge is moving through a wire what's that current per unit area this is the current per unit uh surface it's the current per unit distance if this gives rise to the following the divergence of the uh of the current density, this just says that charge is conserved. So if you have a non-zero divergence, then you have to have a buildup of charge uh, in one way or the other, right? So if the divergence is positive, then you're losing charge, okay? If you have a constant, if the divergence is zero, then there's no charge buildup. That's, uh, what do we call that? Kirchhoff's junction rule, that's the same thing as that. Here we have uh, the law of Beal and Savard. This is how to find the magnetic field due to a moving point charge. So QV is the value of the charge. R is a vector from that charge to where you want to find the magnetic field. R hat. Oh, that's R squared. Oh, my gosh. Squared. Sorry. Fixed it. Uh, if you have a magnetic a current, you can find the magnetic field. But again, you're going to have to integrate over that whole current because we have a whole bunch of moving charges right there. This is Ampere's law. This says that if you have some region of space and you can pick a, an appropriate, you don't even have to pick that, but if you pick an appropriate uh, path, the, the magnetic path integral of B dot DL around that path is equal to the current passing through the area associated with that path times mu naught. Uh, notice that in the previous case, we said the integral of E dot DL over a closed path was zero, which isn't always true, but we'll get back to that. And then this is the uh, differential version of Ampere's law, uh, and it it's from Stokes' theorem. You can get this. This just tells you how the curl of the magnetic field depends on the current density. The end.